Hi, good morning to each and everyone. My name is Shirley Barcoma, SHS ICT Teachers of Lacey Mapalabang. My topic is all about software testing and test coverage, black and white box testing, and for test first development. But for this part, I will focus on testing and test coverage. All right. Consider a scenario where you are moving a file from folder A to folder B. Think of a possible ways you can test this. Apart from the usual scenarios, you can also test the following conditions. Trying to move the file when it is open. You do not have the security rights to paste the file in folder B. Folder B is on shared drive and storage capacity is full. Folder B already has a file with the same name. In fact, the list is endless. First, suppose you have 15 input fields to test each, having five possible values. The number of combinations to be tested will be 5 raised to 15. If you were to test all the possible combinations, project execution time and cost will rise exponentially. Hence, one of the testing principles states that executive testing is not possible. Instead, we need optimal amount of testing based on the risk assessment of the application. And million dollar is, how do you determine this risk? To answer this, let us do an ex exercise in your opinion. Which operation is most likely cause your operating system to fail? I'm sure most of you would have guessed letter C. Opening 10 heavy graphics applications all at the same time. So, if you were testing this operating system, you would realize the effects are likely to be found in multitasking module and that needs to be tested thoroughly. Defect clustering, which states that um, a, sim a small number of modules contain most of defects detected. With experience, you can identify such risky modules, but this approach has its own problem. If the same tests are repeatedly over and over again, eventually the same test cases will no longer find new bugs. This is another principle of testing could, testing called pesticide paradox. To overcome this, the best cases need to be regularly reviewed and revised adding new and different test cases to help find more defects. But even after all of this wet and hard working and testing.
you can never claim your product is bug free. To drive home this point, let us see this video of the public launch of Windows 1988. Windows 98. Would you think a company like Microsoft Word would have tested their OS truly and would not risk their reputation just to see their OS crashing during the public launch? Hence, the testing principle states that testing shows the presence of defects, for instance. Testing reduces the probability of undiscovered defects remaining in the software, but even if no defects are found. It is not a proof of correctness of a proof that no defects remain in the system. But what if you work extra hard taking all precautions and making sure your software product, product is 99% bug free and the software does not meet the needs and requirements of the clients? which lead us to our next principle, which states the absence of error is a fallacy. Finding and fixing defects does not help in the system. Build is an unusable and does not fulfill the user needs and requirements. To fix this problem, the next principle of testing. Testing is context dependent, which basically means that the way you test is an e-commerce site will be different from a way you test a commercial off-the-shelf application. Before we proceed with the next tutorial, here is the quick recap of the seven testing principles. Test coverage. Next tutorial is all about test coverage in software testing. In this tutorial, you will learn about test coverage and what it does, how test coverage can be accomplished, benefits of test coverage, what are main differences, between code coverage and test coverage, formula to calculate test coverage, example of test coverage, and drawbacks. Test coverage is defined as a metric in software testing that measures the amount of testing performed by a set of tests. It will include gathering information about which parts of a program are executed when running the test so to determine which branches of condition statements have been taken. In simple terms, it is a technique to ensure that your tests are testing your code or how much of your code you exercise by running the test.
So basically, test coverage does in defining the area of a requirement not implemented by a set of a test cases helps to create additional test cases to increase coverage. Identify a quantitative measurement of test coverage, which is an indirect method for a quality check and identifying meaningless test cases and do not increase coverage. This can be accomplished by exercising the static review techniques like peer reviews, inspections, and work, work through. By transforming the ad hoc defects into executable test cases, outcode level or unit test level, test coverage can be achieved by availing the automated code coverage or unit test coverage tools and functional test coverage can be done with the help of a proper test management tools. When it comes to the benefits of test coverage, it can assure the quality of the test. It can help identify the portion of the code where actually tasked for the release or fix. It can help to determine the paths in your applications that were not tested. Prevent defect leakage. Time, scope, and cost can be kept under control. Defect prevention at early stage of the project life cycle. It can determine all the decision points and paths used in the application, which allows you to create test coverage. Gaps in requirements, test cases and defects at the same at the unit level and code level can be found an easy way. Code coverage and test coverage are measurement techniques which allow you to assess the quality of your application code. Here are the some critical differences between both of these coverage methods. Code coverage terms used when application code is exercised when an application is running. Test coverage means overall test plan. The goal of the code coverage metrics is to help the team monitor their automated test. While test coverage is about giving off details about the level to which the written coding of an application has been tested. Code coverage also is divided with subtypes like statement, coverage, condition coverage, branch coverage, toggle coverage, and finite state machine coverage. However, there will be subtype of test coverage method. To calculate test coverage, you need to follow the below given step. Number one, the total lines of codes in the piece of software quality you are testing. So number two, the number of lines of code all test cases currently execute. Now, you need to fix A divided by Y, multiply by 100. The result of application of this calculation is your test coverage percentage. For example, if the number of lines of code in a system component is 500 and the number of lines executed across all existing test cases is 50, then your test coverage is 50 divided by 500 times 100 is equal to 10%. This is the test coverage. Now, here are the example test coverage. If knife is an item that you want to test, then you need to focus on checking if it is cuts the vegetable or fruits accurately or not. However, there are another aspect to look for like and user 
should able to handle it pro profitably. profitably. Another example, if you want to check the Notepad application, then checking its essential features is a must thing. However, you need to cover other aspects. As Notepad application resp responds expectedly while using other application, the uh, user understands the use of the application. Do not crash when the user trusts to do something unusual, etc. One of the major drawbacks of the test coverage is most of the tasks in the test coverage is manual as there are no tools to automate. Therefore, it takes lots of effort to analyze the requirements and create test cases. Test coverage allows you to count features and then measure against several tasks. However, there is always space for judgment errors. So that's all for test coverage. I just hope that I would be able to share with you the information regarding test coverage. We having more of this tutorial in a while. Up next is black and white testing.